The Melbourne Herald Sun newspaper today broke a story uh, from leaked documents exposing what you could describe as potentially deadly triple O delays on calls for emergencies in Victoria. Now, the reports have exposed a wait time of more than one minute for emergency calls to be answered uh, for police, for fire, ambulance services. Anyone who's used triple O will know how what sort of state of mind you're in when you call that number. Uh, let's bring in the Victorian Liberal MP and Shadow Health Minister, Georgie Crozier. Um, the government tried to pour cold water on this this morning, Georgie, welcome to you, and said, oh, no, uh, and the triple O operators themselves were wheeled out and said, well, it, it's not right, it's wrong. What's, where, where's the truth here? Oh, well, Steve, um, I'd be believing, believing the whistleblowers, those people that are working in the system who've taken that screenshot to show the true issues that are arising. And they are saying that uh, 11 people waited over a minute for their calls to be answered. So that's Victorians dialing triple zero in an emergency, but waiting over an hour, uh, sorry, over a minute, I should say. Now, there are three centres here in Victoria where those calls are taken. And to say that there's nothing wrong here by government and other uh, you know, patsies to, to do the government's bidding is simply not the case when you've got whistleblowers saying this is happening on a regular basis. So this is a real concern for any Victorian who is dialing triple zero in, a t in times of emergency. As you know, every second counts in an emergency and to wait over a minute is a very alarming uh, figure. Your memory, George, is better than mine, but I've got a memory of, was it during the last state election campaign that there was quite an argument over staffing of this particular service and the government at the time promised or indeed did increase the number of staff in that call centre? Well, that's right, Steve. So, of course, the um, we've had dozens of Victorians that have been linked to the failures within triple zero and failures for an ambulance to arrive. We know that at least 33 Victorians died in recent years. And this is after warnings way back in 2016 that no, more needed to be done with the tri triple zero system. So this has been going on for years and years and years. And there were promises that more staff had come in. But the government is saying, yes, well, we've put more staff in, but they're not telling you, well, how many have left? How many left have left the system? And when you've got these figures on a board where you've got 11 Victorians waiting for over a minute before their, their emergency calls are being answered, how many other Victorians have given up? How many other Victorians are hanging up because they can't get through? And that is the real concern here when these uh, emergency situations are not being responded to in a timely fashion. That is putting lives at risk. Every second counts in an emergency. And yes, clearly there more needs to be done to be able to adequately provide the services that police, ambulance and fire services require to get to uh, the community and, and address their needs. And as you say, if the operators were happily employed, they wouldn't be taking photographs and leaking them to the media. Here's the uh, Health Minister, Mary Ann Thomas, today. Here's what she had to say about this. It has met all of its performance targets in relation to ambulance um, calls uh, since August 2022, uh, after our government made a significant investment and commitment to continue to strengthen and reform triple zero. I note she only says ambulance there. What about police and fire? That's right. You know, we've got fire services, police services and ambulance services. And this is the problem. Uh, this was... Uh, these, these issues that are arising... She must think we're a fool. She must board. think we're fools. Well, I think Victorians understand exactly what's going on here, Steve. And it's the minister who's foolish in this because there it is on that board... 11 Victorians could not get through, had to wait for over a minute to get their emergency calls answered. That's telling you that something is seriously wrong. And I know that they will, they will try and spin this and cover up and throw out statistics, but that is there on the board, taken by one of the, those um, operators within the system who is saying, we've got a problem here. And that is 11 Victorians who are needing those emergency services who were not being serviced. And I think it's a, doing a great disservice to the broader Victorian community at a time when we need to have 
all of our systems working and have these issues resolved after so much, dis you know, very, very significant issues within the system where dozens of Victorians died because they couldn't get through to triple zero or can, couldn't get an ambulance. It seems to me the Victorian government's at war with a, a lot of the frontline workers and I think that comes back to the fact the state's broke, they can't afford to give people pay rises. I do know though the Victoria Police have paused their industrial action. Uh, they're exploring a, a nine day fortnight to address burnout and unpaid overtime, Georgie. Now the last thing we should be doing is not paying police enough but <laughs> when you've got a state that's only got a, a double A credit rating is basically broke then uh, you can see why the police are not getting the pay rises that they need. This seems to me to be a bit like a stalling tactic. Steve, you're right. The state is broke. And the priorities of the Allen Labor government, like the Andrews Labor government, are all wrong. They are putting billions of dollars into tunnels, into infrastructure projects, but they're not providing the basic services like supporting our police that are there to keep the community safe. Now, at a time when we're coming into a busy business, uh, busy um, holiday period, we need our police officers to feel supported and we've got a government who's gone to war with them. You can, you can see what's happening. In October, there was a survey where 25% or 28%, I think, said that they were going to leave the service within 12 months. How is that going to help the community when these police officers are there to keep the community safe? And we've got some real problems in this state with rising crime, home invasions, uh, car thefts, uh, you know, uh, knife crimes on the rise, all of these things that are just horrible. We've got drive-by shootings, uh, tobacco shops being torched every, you know, every second day, it seems to me. We've got really significant crime occurring and we've got a police service that is really screaming out for support from a government who's going to war with them. And that is not, that is not good enough. And I think you're right. I think this is a complete stalling tactic, but made on behalf, made by the government because they've got no money to negotiate. Uh, with these frontline workers and that is a real concern and should be a concern for every single Victorian. Yeah, 100% you're quite right. Georgie Crozier, as usual, thank you very much for your time tonight. That is a real problem in Victoria.